last time we talked about some of our California specific uh, data and, and, and fisheries. I wanted to give you guys, we haven't yet, so even though you guys read this, I want to make sure you, you got all the ideas from most recent uh, global assessment. So let me just point out to you guys that um, it takes a while to pull together this, these, this data. So you guys, should, we just did our, our public opinion poll. We're racing, 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 trying to jam that together. And it's, even that took you know, a week or so to get everything cleaned up and this and that. Imagine if you have now not just you, but all these guys from the other county and these guys from the other state and the guys from the other country and, the da -da 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 -da, and they use Mac and they use Excel and they use CSV and they use you know, all that complicated stuff. So typically when we present aggregate data of a country, a large country or the globe, we're gonna be looking at data that's a few years old. So typically we're talking on the order of two to three years, just it takes that long to get everything together to do at least some decent QA, QCing of it. It's never perfect, but, but so that, that's the, the context for this. Again, our, our big overarching question here is, 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 is this, are these systems too complex? Is our messing with them making it so complex that we can't manage them? And we're working towards answering that. I um, showed you guys this data before, but I just added in a couple new uh, chunks of, of data here from our most um, recent data sets. And, and don't really um, tell us a whole lot more other than a little more precisely. So at first I said it was about 20%. Um, the actual number, the most recent number is 16, you know, about, about 17%. It's not exactly 20%. Um, and that globally, on average, we're consuming just under 20 kilos of fish protein per year. The most recent stuff that hasn't come out in a way that it's easy for us to disaggregate it, but the most recent aggregated stuff is the news that was made just last year is that we've exceeded 20 kilos per person on average in terms of uh, fish generated protein. And in the US, um, we're a bit lower than that. So we're, we're you know, on the order of a third to a quarter of that global average, meaning that while we do eat sea, at the US as a whole now, so this is averaging everybody in Iowa and Florida and Louisiana, et cetera. Um, but what that's saying is that on average, we Americans don't eat as much fish protein as folks in other uh, areas of the world. Uh, we, we generated this last time, but again, just to reiterate, uh, this is what we're talking in terms of our, our landings. The pelagic fish are the largest chunk of our broad categories of what we're taking out of the global ocean, and uh, followed by demersal fish, fish associated with the benthos, and then uh, we hit our, our invertebrates, our crustaceans, our mollusks. And we talked about this last time, the different the different types of harvest methods that we use to, to get wildly living uh, critters. And we talked about these four various factors. We have our stock or our population. And we have the, the way we get more biomass in that stock is either having babies come in or allowing the individuals enough time with the resources to grow. And, and we lose biomass by either things straight up dying or um, we humans taking them out. With a very few number of species, there's actually another loop over there. With things like krill, they can actually shrink. Most, most of these um, stocks we're managing, they, they only get bigger, they don't get smaller, but a few things like krill actually, if they're in the starvation state, actually will get smaller. They'll, they'll, they'll create new exoskeletons and they'll get smaller, but that's, that's not the norm. It is a trip. Okay, so let's talk about our global story here. The big story, the, the big picture in terms of looking at, well, you guys tell me, have a look at this. What do you, so in blue, we have so-called capture, what we might call wild caught uh, seafood. And, and now this is, this is fisheries broadly writ. So this is fin fish as well as the invertebrates, et cetera. Uh, and this is global data. And so the blue here is, is the, the wild living critters, and then the salmon color is the cultivated stuff. Um, now, we haven't talked about this yet, but just to be clear, the most general term for that type of generation is aquaculture, so growing stuff in water. So if you want to just use one term, use aquaculture. For most of what, uh, for a lot of what we're talking about, salt water, we would use the term mara or marine, right? Mariculture. So mariculture is the same thing as aquaculture, just in 
seawater or brackish water. Aquaculture is only this. It, it, aquaculture is anything grown in water. Mariculture is the subset that is done in salty uh, water. Cool. Okay. So with that said, we have uh, wild capture, wild caught stuff in blue, and aquaculture in the salmon color. So what 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 trend? Tell me a couple. What do you guys get from this? Okay, Elise says it's going up. Good. So, so overall, the right side of the graph is higher than the left side. So things have been increasing over the years, Steve. Um, ocean fishing, well, wild ocean fishing looks like it's, it's stabilizing while the aquaculture is increasing. Yes. So, so the aggregate, the, if we combine all our, both our, our fields, it's going up. But that's a little bit misleading, right? It's only going up because of aquaculture. <laughs> Yeah. Could that be an issue therefore we're having to convert to a different Yes, market? exactly. That's exactly. Not a rice being um, produced in a salt water uh, Right. So so yeah, so the short version is the story of this is the blue side. I mean, well there's multiple stories here. But the one that should concern us the most, the blue is not getting any bigger. That's right. Good. Okay, so let's check that. So, so Finn and Steve say that's a good thing. So it could be, could be. Could it not be? Because there's not that much catch. Yeah. So again, this is the confounding factor that we have to be very careful when looking at landings data. That's what this is. This data, is, as I presented, well, actually, as the, as the FAO, as, as the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, which is the master global unit that, that synthesizes global scale fisheries data. That's what we all use, or at least that's what everybody starts with. Um, but the point is, this, is, this just says how many millions of tons of biomass. Doesn't say how many vessels are working, right? This is not catch per unit effort. Right? This is not saying the area over which we were, we were um, uh, fishing. It just says total stuff that came to the dock. So the assumption that most of us, it's very natural to look at this and assume that we're, we're doing the same amount of effort in 1950 as we were in uh, 2014 on this graph. And I guarantee that's not the case. So, so don't, so again, this is, this is the trick. This is the this is the Hobbesian bargain. It's not Hobbesian bargain. This is the this is the the temptation that you guys all got taken by in doing fish banks, right? You're like, I'm gonna go more fish, more fish. So we were confusing the fish that we landed or the fish that we were able to bring back to the dock and sell with the actual population, the biomass, right? We're assuming it's a it's a one to one, and there's there's complicating things going on there. The, so the only reason it's going up right now is because of our, our efforts to figure out how to farm. Now, we're, not gonna, we're gonna run out of time, we're not gonna be able to talk about aquaculture too much today, but suffice it to say, we've been intensely, intensely farming planet Earth for at least 10,000 years, at least 10,000 years, mostly in the terrestrial realm. We've gotten incredibly sophisticated. We've transformed, now the most common land form across planet Earth is a human dominated ecosystem. More dominant than forest, more dominant than grasslands, all that kind of stuff. We, we, are, we are incredible farmers, right? Now there's downsides, but we're very sophisticated for how we farm. Nowhere near is sophisticated in the aquaculture world, right? Now the Chinese have been uh, perhaps our oldest culture that we would now consider to be aquaculture, call it 5,000 years or so ago. but but nowhere near as ubiquitous around the planet, nowhere near as consistently in, intense, et cetera. So we're still figuring out how to do this aquaculture. We're still very much in the learning, the early phase of this. But nevertheless, we are seeing it grow. Steve. When, when you have a situation like this, and you're growing fish, probably in the ocean, right? Do a lot yeah, of yeah, yeah, uh-huh. So you're, you're taking up resources out of the ocean, even though you're farming these things, you're not taking the wild ones, they're still using resources. Absolutely. I'm not say, we're not saying that one is impactful, one is not impactful. Many of the stuff that you like to eat, and we'll find this out in our next module when we start doing our surveys, many things you like to eat, you've been trained to eat predators. 
You like to eat salmon. I like to eat salmon, right? That's a thing that eats a bunch of other fish. You, generally speaking, don't like to eat tilapia. You, generally speaking, don't like to eat uh, herbivores. You like to eat these carnivorous fish. Man, I'm gonna eat this crap. And then, and they have all these fats that we like. Really like they taste good to us and all that kind of jazz. So, so there's, there's, so one cultured fish is not the same as another cultured fish. But big picture, just first pass. Uh, the UN data would tell you that the data that the, that the landings are going up, only augmented by the aquaculture, and that inflection point is somewhere in the 1990s. Somewhere in the 1990s, we stopped the the arc going up, stopped going up. Brittany. I'm just curious about um, like hatcheries. Do mm -hmm. hatcheries do anything with aquaculture? Is that yes, hatcheries count. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see some of that in a bit. Okay, number next round. Here we go. Um, the, so, the supply, so here, okay, light. Let me orient you to this figure first. Again, like before, time back in the day on the left-hand side of the figure going f more uh, future in time, forward in time as we go to the right. Um, on the left is the the what is the the fish measurement the million in millions of tons and so the left hand figure you're going to read the bar graphs on the right hand axis excuse me the left hand axis i should say the right hand axis on this graph that is where we're getting the um uh people the the, the people and the per capita data okay so so for the lines you read the value of the lines on the right side of the graph everybody with me on that yeah okay so now let's have a look at this so um, for much of this curve, the salmon colored upper line is a, is a steeper rate. It's increasing faster than the pale pink line. The pale pink line is how many people we have on the earth. So that's, you know, at that level, that's good, right? We have, we want more food. We, we don't want people starving, right? We don't want to go in the other way. Then we're in real trouble. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's the first thing that something like uh, on the order of three odd percent per year average annualized um, growth in, in terms of our protein from fish sources, fishery sources, and that's about double our population growth rate. And so that translates into more fish being eaten per person on average uh, than, than back in the day. Yeah? Okay, have a look. Um, the, so the food item would be something like uh, something you would eat for caloric benefit. What would be an example of non-food non uses of, say, this fish we just captured? Okay, so fertilizer. So maybe we ultimately would, would eat it, but maybe we're going to take those fish and throw them on our corn crops and generate uh, plant protein as opposed to fish protein, for example. Cool. Maybe we might maybe we might skin that shark and turn it into a wallet or something like that, right? So um, so that that love that not the non-food use has kind of gone up, sort of basically hovered, and we're now on the bit of a downhill slide with that, right? Uh, but the food utilization is going up. So food is really where people recognize the main value of this protein is. But note that there's a lot of, there's still a lot of these pink bars, meaning we're taking this food item and doing something and treating it as if it's something other than food. Cool? So does that take into consideration like the amount of food that's wasted for lack of better terms? Like mm. No, this is stuff that's landed and then what was it to be used as? After? So oh. it could have been thrown away, it could have rot, gotten rotten later, but different. Right. Okay. Uh, this is human food. This is human food. Okay. Um, now we're doing, so this, a couple of you guys asked this question. So we're doing stuff um, uh, inside, uh, excuse me, uh, in, in areas we can cultivate some of our critters, uh, not necessarily in the ocean, but they might be away from the ocean. They could be in the desert. We have some examples of people growing sturgeon near Sacramento. Uh, and stuff like that in a, in a completely artificial, 
you know, human controlled aquarium, if you will, a runway situation. And so that's what we're talking about here. And so <clears throat> again, capture this guy, this part of the figure. This is, this is the wild caught part of the story. This is the, the uh, farmed grown stuff. And this is utilization, uh, what we're doing. And again, we've, 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 crossed, the, we've crossed the 20 uh, kilos uh, just last year per person global average. Um, don't, this figure is a little pixelated and it's hard to see, but just glance at it. What, I'm, what I want you to get at here is, um, one, we're fishing all over the world now. There is no region we do not fish. There is no region that is not in some zone that receives at least some type of fishing effort. And then uh, just for clarity, these are, these are the different sources of, of, um, of data. So the dark, the dark ones, so here we have a dark pink and then we have a light pink. The dark are the United Nations data. Okay, again, this is what everybody or, or the vast majority of people default to using. This is the entity that's drawing in data from across the world. This is one of the main strengths of having an organization like the UN that isn't anybody's one country that's going to say who's the winner or loser, but is rather at least hopefully an independent observer, right? And then these other bars, these lighter colors, these are other data sources. That might be the nation's estimate. They might be some NGO's estimate. They might be some university's estimate, something like that. What do you see with those bars? Are those bars the same? Not at all. So what does that tell you? Somebody's wrong. <laughs> There's some disagreement, right? So now, now maybe the pink is wrong, maybe the dark pink is wrong, but maybe they're both wrong, right? But, but the fact that there's some, that, that very rarely are these bars all similar, that should be very much worry you as a, as a scientist, right? So, it's, so the, the answer, our management decision might depend on whose data we're looking at. And that's, that's not good, right? So that's telling us that there might be some problems with our underlying basic information. And if you and I don't know how many fish we're taking out of the ocean, for example, how can we make, how do we know if we have a problem, A? And then B, how do we know if our responses are, are taking us to a better, uh, more sustainable place? Uh, oh my God, super hu huge amount of data. I gave, I gave you guys some of these, this data uh, the other day when we did that exercise. And you guys, and this is on our reading, so you guys can go look at this. But suffice to say, these are these different fishing regions. And I've just made the ones yellow here for the ones that, that touch our <coughs> waters of the United States. Excuse me. So we have the, uh, the northwest part of the Atlantic. We have the west central part of the Atlantic. We have the Pacific Northeast. Again, we're talking about the oceans here. So northeast is our west coast. Right. Yeah. And then uh, eastern central, et cetera. So what this is showing you, don't get, don't get lost in the details. Just have a look. So this first part of this is just a region. And this is saying for uh, the, you know, the previous decade, this is what the average annual um, a haul is, and again, this is this is in terms of tons. All the, oops, sorry, me. all these three vet columns here are in tons. So this is the average amount, and then and then what we what we landed in 2013, what we landed in 2014, and then just the change depending on how you want to look at it. They're so, yeah, we're all going down. We're all going down. Hmm. hmm. Yeah. I just gra I grab these figures out of the UN document, so uh, it's a UN document. So it's 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 their their agreed to format. So we use the British spelling of tons and things like that. So there, there's there's some formatting issues. I, I I would not have made a figure like this, but that's okay. That's okay. It's interesting to see which one you're growing. Indeed, exactly. Hard to see. Oh my God, I can't see this. You already looked at this. You guys already have. I already hand, gave you guys this as a handout. But suffice to say, um, we have some. Uh, so actually, you looked at this, which is probably too small for most of you guys to see when it's up here on the screen. But basically, the biggest stuff, the, the, or the most uh, uh, single, bio, largest amount of biomass from one single species in, what is it, 2014, 
is our uh, Alaskan Pollock, right? When you go to Rubio's and have fish tacos, that's what you're eating. When you go to, uh, a lot of times you go to McDonald's, that's what you're eating. When you go to your fish stick aisle in the supermarket, that's what you're eating, okay? Uh, yeah, white fish is another term for that stuff. Um, and then in terms of who's, who's catching the most amount of biomass, China is number one here. Have a look at it. China, um, right here in 2014, um, the UN says they're catching more than almost 15 million tons. Or sorry, th this is in million tons. Almost, almost uh, 15,000 million tons of fish, right? The United States is third, is third here, right? Right. So hold that for a second. So, 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 so let's not even talk about numbers. Let's just say relative position. China, really big, followed by Indonesia, followed by the U.S., Russia, Japan, and, and then a uh, little bit of Peru. Peru. So this number, this top number, is with their anchovies. Huge blooming fish. So some years lots of anchovies, some years not. So to control that really variable species, if it's a good year or bad year, we report these guys as the catch with with that, that species added in, and then the catch without that one species, right? So hugely skewed by this one species, okay? But the point is, after we hit sort of the Peru area, start to get to India, much smaller, much smaller biomass overall. Now, it's really key for you guys as manager type interested people to understand that we're, our management decisions are only ever as good as our underlying data, right? It's no mystery why, for example, um, how do I say this neutrally? Um, it's no wonder that when people want to poorly manage a resource, they first go after the scientists. They first defund the collection of data, right? Because then your data become equivocal and then it's hard to know what is the right and what is the wrong. And so for folks that maybe have perhaps we could say nefarious interests, that's good for them, right? Because then they can keep doing whatever they want to do, and then when someone tries to say, oh, I want to change the management, they go, can't prove it. And they stick their tongue out, and they're like, yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. So let's have a look at this. So this is the reported, okay, the first figure here, the first upper panel, again, from back in the day to more recent. The first one, <coughs> excuse me, is <coughs> the landings in millions of tons reported by China. Okay, on the, on the bottom figure, that's, that's basically everybody else. Okay. And, uh, and check it out. China is doing a lot of stuff, aren't they? Yeah, what are they doing? They, they claim they're taking a lot of fish. Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those bastard the Chinese, horrible Chinese people, right? <laughs> first, here's the first, here's the first thing that should maybe start to raise the smell, sniff test, the smell, something smells like rotten fish or something. <laughs> Check out the bottom figure. Look at Japan. Japan's like, I'm going to get some fish. And then up to like the late 80s. And then Japan started catching less fish, right? Kind of Russian, off. Russian. I'm going to catch some fish, catch a lot of fish Ooh. till late 80s. And then Russian's not catching as many, oh, right? China. Everybody else, are they lying? Ooh, there's an interesting question. Brittany's wondering if maybe there's some non-accuracy in the data. Have a look at this, though. When all the rest of the world, from our wild capture, are either reporting no growth in landings or most of the folks declining harvest, look what happens in China in the late 90s. We're catching more fish. Hmm. How's that working? What happened? Well, let's first take a look at this lower right figure. Can you guys all see that? Actually, can you guys lower the windows? Maybe it's a little, that might help you guys see it better. Okay, so this is, do I have this? Yeah. Okay, so, so there's different ways we can go about this. We're, we're gonna get short on time here pretty quickly, but I'll just, I'll just, ha I'll just suffice it to say that, um, 
here's some different measures. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at this figure down here on the right. We're gonna blow it up over here to make so it'll be easier for you guys to see. Okay, but before I do that, I wanna uh, first go here. So this is a, a really cool tool, a perfect thing that you guys can do, a perfect example of why we train you guys to be good interdisciplinary scientists. While we don't treat you as some of our friends in other departments just say, just pay attention to our discipline, we're the only thing that matters. We think you guys need to have a broad understanding for reasons like this. In this case, what these guys did, some wonderful scientists up, from, up in British Columbia, um, <clears throat> at sort of like the epicenter probably of the best fisheries analysis folks the, on the planet. Um, these guys went to lessons from the IPCC, from our climate change colleagues. Climate change has become very controversial, as you all know. Some people say it doesn't exist and, and that you know, pigs fly and things like that. And then everybody else understands that it's a real thing that we need to be, deal with seriously. But there is this, there, is some, there are some folks, mostly in the US, mostly a very small subset, as you guys have polled and you found that out, uh, that don't believe in this. But nevertheless, we need to bring those folks along. So what these guys said is, hey, it's true. We don't know exactly what's happening. We're figuring this out as we're going. Increasingly, we're much more confident that we know what's happening, but still, we don't know everything by any means, right? The other side will say, you know, we know everything and you're totally wrong. But, right. but so with, with, with they, with the approach that IPCC took to dealing with climate change data is let's, let's bin this stuff. Let's put the stuff that we're really confident in, you know, totally, no, yep, that's super right, super accurate, very confident, high degree of, of accuracy and, and confidence. Two, on one side. On the other side of the spectrum, stuff that, yeah, not sure, maybe, but you know, a lot more unknowns, a lot more harder to predict, all that kind of stuff. And so they've created a score going from four to one. Four is very high confidence, very high reliability. We're sure this is what's going on, or, or, or we're, we're quite sure. To number one, where mm, it's pretty, not, not all, the, all the studies don't show the same thing. They disagree, some t that kind of stuff, right? So, they, they, so these fisheries guys took this approach to the data, and then they applied this approach from one arena into the global fishing uh, arena. And they did this with the most recent data that you guys read, that report that I gave you, the 2016, the most recent global assessment, which uses data from 2014, which is the most recent. That's what they're applying this to. Everybody good with me? Yep. What we're doing? Okay, so here they, here they, here, here's what they did. They looked at the global catch. So let's first, this is going to get complicated. Breathe. Ah, mm, namaste, right? So first, let's look at what we're talking about. This is, they've said, uh, here's some data. And this data between this time period, this basically 20-year time period, and this 20-year time period. Okay, some of the, some of those data sources, some country data, some stock data, whatever, some of that has decreased. Okay, we're going to put that in one group. We're, another, some other uh, data is, hasn't changed very much between that, over that 20 year period. And then some, some uh, data claims that we're getting more, <clears throat> we're getting more individuals than, or, or more biomass than we got before. Cool? All right. So they said how many countries this applies to, right? That's what this number is here. And then this little thing over here, which is taxonomic resolution, this just means uh, do we know it down to the subspecies and super accurate, or is it a species that's really hard to get the species level identification so we're less accurate? Um, and what they've done is <clears throat> um, they've taken this, this uh, global data, this uh, landings data, and they've put it into one of these four categories. Remember, as I've shown you down here, four is the very high. So four is the best. If everything was four, we're very high. It's really great. If, if everything is instead closer to one, that's, mm, don't know, maybe that's happening, maybe not, kind of thing, right? So check it out. The, decrease, the, the, the stocks that have shown decreased landings over time um, have rel are relatively we're relatively highly confident that that's what's going on, right? <laughs> relatively good quality data. The ones that showed the same, um, fairly good data, you know, fa fairly fairly close, but not not quite as good maybe as as the decrease, but similar, very similar. The ones that showed an increase, those are our least reliable data on average, right? So that could go a couple. Could go a couple of ways, but that but that's suggesting that 
that we don't have the same amount of confidence in the numbers going up as we do in the numbers going down, right? <clears throat> so here is the, the, um, the data from the UN's FAO. Sorry, I'm about to sneeze in a second. Hold on. Tangerine? What? <laughs> that means I'm confused. Yeah. I, I might have just had a stroke. I thought somebody said tangerine or something. Okay. Marbles, alligators. I don't know. Okay, so. Okay, what the hell did I say? I don't know. Um, catch data. Okay, right. Catch data. So, so here we go. So that the now this is the wild this is the wild caught stuff right so the UN's own data the one everybody seems to use that's the golden figure here okay so remember it was low and we're catching more and more and more then we got to like the 90s somewhere and we sort of leveled off and now we're actually on the decrease globally okay what these guys did is they went and they said you know some of these areas that we're not confident of. They, we, we had inaccurate data. Maybe some people were underreporting. Maybe some people were overreporting. And they reconstructed the catch based on a whole bunch of research that we don't have time to go into. And what they find is a similar gross pattern, same story, that overall the, it's sloping downwards. But in the reconstructed data by these rigorous fishery scientists, it's going down at a much steeper rate. Right? We're falling off the cliff much more, or a, a much steeper cliff. Um, uh, well, that's the wrong figure. Forget that. Okay. All right. So we pull it all together. We get this story. So the point here is that the specifics of the story might change depending on our confidence of the data. And China is the big problem. Or is, well, there's several problems, but China is by far the biggest problem. But, e but even with or without China, whatever, grossly, it's the same story that's happening. Because of the problem with the data that has been introduced intentionally, some would argue, we're masking how, how, how quickly the problem is manifesting. But everybody agrees there is a problem. So the first one, the first figure I'm showing you here is from 1996. That's the very first time that at a global scale, we looked at this issue of declining stocks in a rigorous, robust way and found evidence of wide scale, broad based declining fish landings, fisheries landings. And so what all the, and this is, again, I, you guys have seen this before, but and in some of your readings, but basically, here we go. This is, this is um, undeveloped in the language of the fisheries people, meaning, oh, we could totally screw that one over more, right? So undeveloped. This is, purple is, in the language of, of, these, of these fishery scientists, is we're getting better at sucking everything out of the ocean. The dark blue is maximally harvested. They would argue this is being harvested at basically MSY or just a little bit below MSY. And then the, the teal, the light blue on the right, is over harvested. So the way you read these figures uh, is we, you, don't, you, you don't do it as a traditional way that you guys, that we're used to looking at, here's this date and let's look up this level. How you're meant to interpret this is going from right to left. So, so you should look at this figure as, as this slope is the big story here, right? So undeveloped, we're getting fewer and fewer undeveloped. Now we basically have no undeveloped fisheries. Everybody's, everywhere is being fished. And then go up to the top, the part that is being, that, that's senescent, that is decaying, that we've way over harvested or are, or are in the process of over harvesting. Small percentage to start up here in the 60s and now it's bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and bigger right? So this is this estimate from 1996. This is this more academic analysis. And so these dates don't always exactly line up and they're done at different times, but you guys get the idea, right? Boom, 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 boom. And then this is the most recent one that from the FAO using, using all the data that may be a little suspect. Uh, generally speaking, the same broad pattern, but have a look. This one is a much steeper decline, right? Than what the, F the UN might have you, might suggest from their data. So the answer to all this, so there are many reasons for this. You guys know about this. It's bycatch, we're over harvesting. The one thing we haven't talked about, and I just want to mention really quick again, because we've got to get on here. But 
is this issue of China. Why does China overreport? Any ideas? Any guesses? Yeah, okay, right. So in a nutshell, that's pr there are many possible reasons in many settings, but Brittany's answer is probably the best. So here's how it works. Uh, so I'll just tell you, let's see. I don't want to sound like I'm attacking China. Uh, so, so I'll tell you a story of a friend. Of, how about this? I'll tell you a story of a friend of mine who's a movie producer that does movies in China. It's not like here. It is like, it is like the Wild West, right? Very energetic. If you guys get a chance, you should totally go to China. Check out amazing place, crazy place. Um, so they show up, and they have all of their camera gear to do their activity. And so they land the airport and they're going to go make a movie with, you know, all these actors and uh, crews and stuff like this. And, um, and, and they go to get their gear and the gear is, and they go to pick up their gear and somebody goes, oh, dude, that's like a thousand bucks. And they're like, what? Like, yeah, it's a thousand dollar. It's, what is it? It's import tax. No, 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 we paid the tax. Oh, you know, this is different import tax? This is like the other import tax. And, <laughs> and, you're, and these folks are saying, like, hey, wait, what? No. And so, so basically, okay, then we're going to impound your stuff. So then their stuff is impounded. And so in some cases, if it's a light, who cares? You go to the hardware store and get a light. But in other cases, it might be some very specialized camera, some very specialized gimbal, something that you can't just go down to the hardware store and get or make. So now they're in the process of doing their, now they're in the process of trying to film their movie. Oh my God, we need the magical thing to make whoever the hell, Tom Cruise look tall or something, right? Something magical or something, it's impossible to do. Um, so so uh, they can't find it, so they start calling around to companies. Hey, can we borrow that? Oh, we have something we can rent you. Okay, cool, all right, great. So I need to X, oh, we got that same thing, perfect. Boom, we'll order it, shows up, it's their gimbal. It's their piece of equipment with their name on it and everything. So now they're paying that guy Right? So that is, that is just this Wild West culture that is China right now. Is it getting better? Yes, but that's still, that's still the culture right now. So when it comes to this um, thing, one of the, the things that presented, especially in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, you know, China, um, now we think of China as this big competitor and this you know, manufacturing giant, but back then they were coming up very insecure themselves, right? Feel like the, the West is dumping on them, they want to show they're great. And so what happens? Incentives. So the low, each level of the government says, you know, hey, if you do a better output, I'm gonna give you a little more money, you get a little more, little more love, a little more this or that, right? So when the guys come in and land, let's say, one ton of fish at the dock, the, the government inspector, whoever that's weighing that, is like, well, I wanna do better. So maybe we'll make it like 1.001 tons, right? That's not a big deal, right? But it's a little better, it's good. So, and then it goes to the next level. And that guy's checking out. It's like, oh, 1.001 tons? Hmm. Well, hmm. Actually, what is it like 1.002 tons, right? And so there's all this level. And there's so much, there was so much pressure to say that you're doing better, that China is great in general, and that, too, that my division, my, my unit, my people, my, my area of operation that I'm doing well, well I'm just going to flub it, right? So... It, some of it was intentional, but a lot of it is, is, is an emergent property of this bureaucracy, right? An emergent property of the incentives that are put in place. And so as a consequence, we have this massively overinflated data and problematic data from China. So when, now when you go back and look at these reports I'm just telling you about, because I know you guys have already all read them, so it's, you know, when you go back and read them, right? <laughs> um, have a look. What you'll see in most of these global aggregate data is it'll say, you know, all these countries, country A, B, C, D, and then it'll say world, and then below that it'll say world without China. Because the Chinese data are so large, they skew the picture, right? And let me reemphasize, this is a non-trivial thing. Most ministers that are doing this, they're not scientists, they're looking at the report. The UN's not trying to deceive us, right? The UN's trying to do its best job, but the UN doesn't have its own fisheries, folks. The UN is getting the data from the countries. They have to they have to rely on it, right? So it was, I'll just say, it was a huge, uh, bad word, a huge S storm when this <laughs> broke, right? And this group from British Columbia really pointed this out and people were saying, you're racist and you're, you're like anti this and that. And it was, it, was, it was a very contentious thing at first to bring this to people's attention 
Now everybody pretty much understands this. Okay, so that, that's the situation. Now, for all this, whether we're, whether we're just doing better and we're, we're choosing to not harvest, or in more, most cases we've taken too much and the stock is collapsing, how do we respond? How do we respond? And the, res the response is what you guys already saw. The response is to not consider the stock equilibrium as of four things. The response is to think of the stock equilibrium as of five things. So we can augment stocks. Now, traditionally, we think of augmenting as just coming in and, and having more fish farm than people eating it. But increasingly, what we're moving towards, what Brittany was pointing out before, um, which was um, a, a, a brood stock. Right? So with our salmonids, we don't, in Alaska, they say, we don't have fish farms. Total croc, right? That's all marketing. They fooled all you guys. <laughs> Almost all their runs are augmented with, with breeding facilities at the top of the river. Now, they're not growing those fish from little teeny babies up to market size, but they sure as heck are making a lot of little fingerlings and letting them go in the ocean, right? And so they would say, we don't farm, but that's kind of, you know, Artificial insemination going on there. So, so what they're doing is they're augmenting our wild stock. Don't say tangerine. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Right. Back to this. So, um, pineapple. What is this fruit that you guys are giving me? Okay. So, so the answer is here. One of the answers that we're doing more of, and this is clearly where our planet is going towards is this idea of wild and, and, and aquaculture? No, we're <laughs> blending the two, right? So we're probably not gonna have everything farmed in the world, or at least not anytime soon. But this notion that everything's just purely wild in this picture of Alaska of some rugged dude with a beard and out on his, you know, I'm such a man and you know, I'm fighting nature, not really the real story, right? Just like, the poor widow farmer trying to do stuff. No, it's corporate agriculture, right? It, it, you know, everybody voted to legalize pot. You voted for, well, I was saying you did, but people that did <laughs> voted for essentially large scale, you know, uh, uh, agri agri agribusiness. And that's not necessarily bad, but that's the reality, right? So don't be tricked by thinking that some picture of, oh, shucks, farmer dude. You know, no, that's not what's going on. What's going on instead is we are bringing elements of farming to the wild ocean and, and, and doing it in different ways. It depends on the species, depends on the region, but that's the hope of the future uh, because we really, that, that's what we're left with. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about aquaculture for a second. Millions of tons. This is a kind of trippy graph. Don't get too tripped out here, but there's no negative here. So everything is just a deviant from, a deviation from zero. You guys with me? Yeah. So, plant, so plants, seaweeds, um, in some cases surf grasses and stuff like that, that would be on the, on the, the <laughs> black bars going towards the bottom of the graph. Everything else is going up. So you can take your, your, your favorite thing, fin fish, which is mostly what we're doing. That's your salmon, that's your tilapia, <clears throat> that kind of stuff. That's in the salmon color. The mollusks, which things like abalone, that's in our blue. And then the crustaceans and other things are, are much smaller. So clearly we like to eat fish and we're most, putting most of our effort into growing more fish. And this is what is, is allowing the, 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 per capita in, the per capita growth of fish protein over time. Are you with me? Okay, oh sorry. So this is, this is gross amount, this is biomass. Same basic story. In this case, this is the value. So plants, nobody cares about. Tell me about it. I did my PhD on it. I know nobody cares what they want to pay for it. But, but so that, that's on the bottom. Not a huge change in the value proposition, right? I mean, it's not, you're not going to starve to death, but you're not going to make a ton of money. Whereas, look at these other things. <clears throat> in particular, the fin fish. In particular, things like salmon. Oh my God, way more, every year, way more money is being generated by this production uh, method, right? So, I mean, from, from 95, that's not that long ago, right? Some of you guys were alive then. So in 1995 to basically call it 20 years later, right? We've gone from about 20-ish billion dollars in, 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 and this is just a gross sale. This isn't like the counting the sales back in the restaurant. This is just a gross sale of the, of the item initially to 100. So it's increased about five times. That's a pretty good investment. <clears throat> That's a pretty good investment. 
<coughs> okay, so the most again, you guys. <coughs> I'm sorry, I gave you this. We didn't we didn't graph this one, but gave us to you again. China is at the top of of the um, uh, the production of this stuff, largest country in the world, all that stuff. That that probably makes sense. Um, and here we go. Um, mollusks, crustacean, other aquatics, and plants, basically the same story as I just showed you. Let's look at this. In particular, a lot of the folks that need the most, we've mentioned that the, the, for you and I, it's something that tastes good, generally speaking. For the developing world, it's more of a, a story of life and death, able to get enough sustenance to keep them alive. Here is net commodity exports for what we would call a uh, uh, least developed countries in the language of the UN, we might call developing nations. Um, so here on the, so milk, milk prices from 93 to 2013, down. People, people are, or at least the profit they're making, much less. So milk ain't a good business to be in right now, right? And again, this is not you and I, this is folks that are economically very marginal. So, that, so that, that, that's a huge issue. Meat, same thing, not making as much uh, meat exports. Rice is about neutral. Smoking stuff is about neutral. Tea is a little bit better. Uh, chocolate, all that stuff's kind of, yeah, same, 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 same. Until you get to coffee, it's doing a little bit better. And then fish. Fish is the big story. So especially in these developing nations, this isn't just a story of getting protein for themselves. It is. But it's also oftentimes one of the, the few economic things that they can do for export, right? So do a, do a prawn farm, do a fish farm, and, they can, and, and that might be seen as a viable alternative for, for their community, their village, their local area. Cool? Here's what the price has done of fish. This is some data the Norwegians pulled together. So this is all standardized <coughs> so that... Uh, yeah, I'll just say that. So 100 is, is it's all standardized to, to basically 2000, it's all standardized to this part of the graph, right? So this is basically no change. So, so this, if it's, if it's above 100, it's, it's more valuable uh, uh, per unit of fish than it was here. And if it's lower than that, it's, it's declining. So this is capture stuff and, uh, sorry, salmon is capture and aquatic is, or sorry, aquaculture is dark blue. And so we have some significant fluctuations, significant fluctuations. Overall, the price from the far left to the price on the far right, it's gone up, right? Overall, it's gone up. But, but it's a highly volatile situation. So again, if you're a developing nation, if it's the year that it's up, you're good. But unlike maybe more wealthy nations or, or, develop, or, or developed nations, um, that's a really tough one, right? Because we can weather, it's hard for us, but we can weather a year or two of of bad profit. If you're on the edge marginally, that's a tough one, right? You don't maybe have the ability to withstand, right? Your business doesn't have that. Your family doesn't have that ability. Um, enforcement is always a thing. So this is a, this is a picture from uh, Northern California with some illegal abalone fishing. This is not Emily's dad. This is something different, <laughs> something much different. Um, but, but again, we talk about this, and we talk about MPAs. Enforcement is kind of the last thing, and oh, by the way, but, but this is a huge deal now, because now we don't even, as problematic as, say, MPA enforcement is in our waters, in our state waters, our wealthy nation, our nation that has rangers and the, and the rule of law and that kind of stuff, right? Here, so much of this is happening in nations that don't have strong uh, governments or is going on in the open ocean where there literally is no governance, <coughs> right? So enforcement becomes either, either very difficult or in many cases, it doesn't even exist. It doesn't even exist. And because of things like flags of, of convenience and all this and that, someone could go and, and illegally catch fish, fillet it, whatever, and then come over here and give you, here's my fillet. Where'd you get that? Oh, I got it from over there. It's all legit. It's all good. And because we mostly trade these items as filleted individuals, as, as, as non-whole fish, it's, it's very hard even for experts to know that it's pink, right? It's white, uh, mm, yeah. right? So I could tell you if that is real, if that's a real, um, what? If that's a real scallop versus the punched out wings of a bat star, because that's what some people do. So I know 
how to look for that, and I could train you guys how to look for that. But that's that's unique. Most of the stuff, it's very hard. They say this is Pollock. They say this is Cod. I don't know, right? Without genetic fingerprinting, it's 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 in many cases impossible. So it, so it's it's a compared to broccoli. If I was trying to sell you broccoli and say this is carrot, you'd be like, <laughs> "What up, dude? Ain't no carrot here, right?" But so so there, there's some inherent things about the seafood trade and fish landings trade that make it more difficult to enforce. So enforcement is always going to be a major thing. Um, and that little story about Chinese uh, data, landings data, is but one small part of the, of the honesty and all that kind of stuff that's a challenge. Cool? We've already talked about all this. Okay, great.